Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this module here, I'm going to be showing you guys a continuation of, we're showing you how to edit, do some basic edits, and I've got kind of a rough cut of my edits here. We're going to show you how to kind of do some cleaning up here and working with uh, uh, your project here to, to get everything kind of ready for a sound mix and ready for color grading. Um, especially if you're going to be doing a sound mix, I would recommend have the, the whole timing of the whole project there, which means some black video at the beginning, a title at the beginning, credits at the end, everything there because uh, music is part of the sound mix and you might even like if the credit fades in, uh, if the title, if the opening title fades in, you might want to put like some uh, some kind of ambient noise there just to kind of start bringing people into the into the movie from the from the get go. And uh, so what I'm going to be doing on this, I'll, I'll have a separate module in the future on just uh, doing credits and titles, but this one I'm going to show you just kind of some basics to get this all prepped for for sound mix here. So first of all, what I probably want to do on this is I want to do some fade-ins here. I want, well, at the very beginning, I want my video to fade in, and I will get into this, the audio, so we're not going to really be doing the audio fade-in, but I'll show you how to do that as well right now. So at the very beginning here, wherever your playhead is, you want to make sure that you're always on an edit. Uh, if you're going to be doing a cross-resolve or fade-in, if I arrow down here and I land on this edit right here, and this might not make as much sense here, but if you want to do it uh, visually on this on this spe uh, specific project, but if you want to do a fade in or you want to do a cross dissolve, it's basically one video fading out where the other clip is fading in. Uh, you get you land on the edits. You hit up and down on your arrows to land on edits. Down goes to the right, up goes to the left. So I'm going to get. Let's say I just want to put a cross dissolve here. Uh, if you hit Control D or Command D on a Mac, it'll do a cross dissolve, and the cross dissolve. And you got to make sure that your track is. If your track is not activated right there, and you try to do a cross dissolve, it won't do it. Watch this. Say Control D. No, nothing's happening. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that that's activated there. My playhead is right there on the edit. I hit Control D or Command D, and it adds that cross dissolve. Uh, now, as we play through this. Now let me mute that because we got some more audio going there. But just watch the visual now. It will fade from here to here. Actually, that doesn't work too badly there. So uh, if you want to use a cross dissolve, whatever. But there you go. So yeah, the, and now, now if you want that cross dissolve to be longer or shorter, you can grab the edge of this. There's a couple ways of doing that. You can either double click on it and add a new duration. Right now it's one second, six frames. If I wanted this to last like three seconds, I'd hit three period for the placeholder on the zero, zero, hit OK. And it makes a three second cross dissolve. Now we've got that big long cross dissolve. Keep in mind that cross dissolve, so that's a nice artistic long cross dissolve there. If you want to, and now you can just grab these visually and just shorten them up and make them quicker or make them longer by grabbing them. And you can also change where the cross dissolve starts. If you want it to start at the beginning of this clip, say you've got some pre-roll over here where the camera's jiggling on this clip, because what, what this is basically doing is if you don't have enough, let me uh, move this shot up here. I hold down Alt and selected that and Alt arrow it up. When it starts cross dissolving into this, keep in mind whatever footage is in this pre roll right here is going to be showing. Eventually, if we get further back, it's just it's going to get into some bad footage that you don't want to show. Also, if you're at the limit of your of your media, you're not going to be able to cross dissolve in it. Like if we've got a clip up here, let me get to the end of the shot. Say we're at the very end of the shot right here. Let me put that at the very beginning. Insert that in there. If we're at the very limit of this shot and you'll know you're at the limit because you've got this little teeny triangle like right there and right there that shows that you are at the limit of your of your media that means if you try to trim this anymore it will stop right there that's the end of the media that's where the record button stopped and if you try to do a cross dissolve between these two right here it needs media to do the cross dissolve over into this one so watch what it does now if i do control d it only puts the cross dissolve going to this direction. It won't put it in the middle because this is the end of the footage. So it's got to cross it all out and then it's got to be out by the time it hits the end of this because it has no media to fade into over here. Now, if I had this on the limit on both the end point and out point, you'd have a little one frame dissolve there that just wouldn't, wouldn't really work. So that's just something to keep in mind that you need handles, what are called handles or excess footage to cross dissolve into. All right, so if we're going to put a fade in at the beginning, it's the same thing, very similar to, to, a, to a cross dissolve. If I go to the very beginning and it has no footage at the beginning, to fade into to do a cross dissolve into and you hit control D it'll do a fade in basically so now that video fades in and there we go so at the end uh, I kind of like the ending here where it, where it knocks and then all of a sudden maybe just cuts to black rather than fades to black so I'm not going to add a cross dissolve I'm not going to add a, a cross dissolve or a fade out at the end uh, we could make this a little more gradual by grabbing that and dragging it out. Okay, next thing I want to do to prep my project here is I want to I want to do some uh, black video at the beginning and end. So it gives it like a moment before the movie starts, like uh, and I can do maybe three seconds of black video at the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to go to my project window here, close my video window, con Control W or Command W will close that, and now I'm going to go down to my new item icon right here, and I'm going to tell it to do new black video. 
And the black video is going to generate it based on whatever timeline I have open, the same resolution, the same frame rate, and I'm going to hit OK. And there's my black video. Now, if you double click on your black video, it will load it into your source monitor. It starts it at zero. This is like a, this is a, an infinite file. I think it's infinite, or it's like 12 hours or something like that of black video. But uh, within my black video here, say I want to I want to go in three seconds. I can just type in on my numpad, not on the top of the keyboard, but on my numpad to the right. I can type in three. And look at this, it inserts a 3 right here, and I hit period as a placeholder for zero, zero, uh, for, for the zero, 0 frames. And I hit enter, and that goes 3 seconds in. Now I can hit O for out point, and now I can hit, my playhead is already at my home point here. If it's not, you can hit shift 3 to go to your go to your timeline, so say your hit playhead's over here. Now I can hit home to go to the beginning. Now to insert that, I hit my comma key, and it inserts my black video there. I'm going to go to the end, and I'm also going to insert three seconds of black video at the end. We're going to be doing credits at the end as well. And now I've got black video at the at the beginning and at the end. Okay, some other things I want to do to prep this here is as I play through this, there's some some issues with the dolly. Dolly kind of uh, is a little bit jiggly here. It's kind of moving up and down and jerking a little bit left and right. In future modules, I'll be showing you guys how to do uh, effects in a proper manner. But uh, just kind of go through the basics to prep this here. I might want to add um, a little bit of a stabilizer to that dolly to make it a little smoother. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that clip. I'm going to go to my effects tab over here. By the way, I am in the editing layout here, working in the editing layout. So it brings up my effects and also my effect controls tab here, which is important. I'm going to go to my search engine on my effects and I'm going to go to, I'm going to type in warp and it brings up my warp stabilizer. I need the stabilizer out of this. I don't need the warp out of it. I'll show you what that is. But I'm going to drag this over and drop it onto my clip. And it will start analyzing that clip. And if you hold, if you select that clip and you go to effect controls, it shows these are your native effects that are these are native to any to any clip that you have on the timeline. But then this is an added effect right there, that warp stabilizer. But the motion opacity and opacity are native effects, and time remapping are native effects. But the uh, you can't delete these. You can reset them, but you can't delete them. The warp stabilizer I can. It's stabilizing, it's almost done here. And you can see that warp stabilizer. This effect controls panel will show whatever clip I have selected in the timeline here. And I always have my playhead over so I can see how I'm affecting it. My playhead is over, it's selected, and effect controls will show the effects. So this warp stabilizer got through analyzing. One thing I don't need here, because the, the sp subspace warp is more for what they call the jello effect. It's when your sensor is catching up with your camera moving left and right. It's kind of a weird little effect, this warbly effect. Uh, but this camera does not have that issue, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm, I'm just going to go by position. This is just going kind of left, right, up, down movement that it's going to adjust for. And I'm, gonna, and I'm going to stabilize for smooth motion here. Uh, and it scaled it up to it scaled this up to 101 percent, just a little bit. Let's see how that looks comparatively speaking here. That is like perfectly smooth. That that it just zoomed up a little bit to kind of stay. And what this basically does here, let me turn this uh, framing off. It turns out to stabilize only. And you'll see what this does. You can see these little black bars around the edge. It compensates for the camera movement. Now you can see that camera movement in the black there. It animates this video and changes its position to compensate for camera movement there, which is really cool. So, But then it has to zoom to get rid of those black bars as it does the animation. So you say uh, stabilize, crop, and auto scale, which is the default. And that did a really good job. So I'm going to go through and do this on a couple of my shots here. Let, let's show you some other examples here where this where there's some issues we can fix here. So yeah, I could also, and I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna stabilize all my dolly shots as well. Uh, so once again, just uh, grab my warp stabilizer, drop it onto this clip. It'll do the anal it'll do the analysis here. I'm gonna turn that from uh, subspace warp to position. You can do this while it is analyzing, by the way. And uh, in smooth motion, that looks good. So I'm gonna let that go there. While, and I can keep editing while it's doing all that smoothing. This one doesn't really need it play through. So you're going to kind of look through your footage and see where 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 the problem spots, spots are here. And I'm going to add the warp stabilizer to that. I'd say don't go nuts on your warp stabilizer. If you have really crazy motion, it really won't do a good job with it. Uh, if it's kind of subtle like dolly movement like this or just kind of really subtle handheld, it does a pretty good job. I've even stabilized footage uh, like via, where we have a camera mounted in the back of a truck uh, and it does a really good job with that as well. See, and here's an example here where she sits back down let me turn off the, I just turned off the warp stabilizer. Look at the shot before. Watch how it kind of just sit, suddenly shifts over to the left like that. And now watch what happens when I check this back on here. Much smoother. That's a lot better. All right, now there's one other shot here that I wanted to fix. 
is right here. With this shot here, as we play through it, you see somebody with a big bounce board waving outside the window to blow the leaves to get those leaves to get a little bit of movement to it. And the framing was kind of off here. Now, the original footage on this was 4K. This is 2K footage. I've downscaled it so you guys can access the... Um, uh, the exercise file without having to download huge files. But what I can do here is we can do a little bit of cropping and zooming on this. The uh, way I recommend that is, uh, as I mentioned, these are native uh, these are native attributes right here to that clip. I've got this clip selected. No effects have been added other than uh, the native attributes, which are permanently added to these things, which you can change. We have position. We have scale. We have rotation, uh, anchor point, and anti-flicker filter. The most commonly used are position through the anchor point here. Anti-flicker filter is not as much of an issue recently, uh, but it has been in the past when we were going from standard definition to higher resolution. This was kind of a big issue. But if you move up here and you grab your position, this is your X position. This is left and right. As you grab this and drag it, this will move your video. If you grab this one, this is your vertical position. This is your Y position. So I'm going to undo that. These position points here are based on are based on your anchor point. My anchor point is right here in the center. And what the anchor point is, basically whenever you rotate or scale, it's going to uh, rotate or scale around that anchor point. See, so watch when I rotate this here. It's going to rotate as, the, as if I stuck a pin right through that onto the wall and you're grabbing a photo and you're rotating it on the wall. If we move that anchor point, if I just move out here and grab this visual anchor point and move it, watch how it rotates around that point now. See, now it rotates around that point. Let me undo that. So your position point is based on where your image is positioned, based on your anchor point. And right now, this resolution is 2048. So basically, that's 1,000, so uh, 2048 across. So that is basically half of that, which is 1,024 pixels across is where my anchor point is, right there in the middle. So from here is 0 to, from here to 248 across, pixels across, your anchor point is right there in the middle, which is half of 248. And then this is 1,000 and 80 pixels up and down, so it's 2048 by 10 by 1080. So going down, uh, this is 540, which is half the pixels down. My anchor point is half the way down down here at 540. Basically, what this comes down to is, let's say we want to get rid of this and we want to use minimal scaling. Let's let's show you just what happens when we scale that to get rid of this window here on the side. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to show you the difference between this and a little trick using the anchor point. I'm going to grab my uh, my scale and I'm going to zoom this up until that window is and that that waving board is out of the shot just barely there we still have the frame in there but now i'm not see, seeing them wave and i have zoomed up 100 i've zoomed up 13 percent so it's at 113. 100 is like a regular 100 uh, is just like your regular zoom nothing's been affected yet but, but uh, at 113 i've gotten rid of that okay but we want to lose as less resolution as possible and less quality as possible so i'm going to undo that and i'm going to show you a little trick here uh, i'm going to move my anchor point first of all i'm going to do it by my visual here i'm going to select this and if you um if you go up here and you click on your anchor point, your wireframes will show up. And you can do this manually as well as you can. See, numerically, it gets kind of confusing trying to change your anchor point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here and grab this visually, and I'm going to drag it over to the side, and I'm going to hold down Control or Command when it gets close to this node here, and it will magnetize to it. So now it's at that point there. So what it's going to do is it's going to grow out from that point this direction. And watch what happens when I scale this out now, how far I have to go. Same thing, get it right on the frame there. And notice what happened here. I only had to zoom 106 to get rid of that rather than rather than 113. So we've saved some resolution as a result to get rid of that there and reframed it. Um, I might even want to, just so it keeps the headroom a little bit low in here, I, I, uh, it, it'll be a minimal adjustment, but I'm going to change my anchor point up to this corner, which will have kind of the same uh, distance to zoom, but now it will zoom downwards a little bit and keep and maintain this headroom without cropping out the headroom. So now watch this as I have my anchor point up there and I scale out. See, I'm going to go right to well, there, 105, so 5% zoom, not that bad. Uh, I could go to 6 and get rid of that, but I kind of like that little glint of light as long as we're not seeing that balance board waft out there. So let's go through it. All right, I dig it. All right, so that's how to change the native effects on there and do some rescaling to get your image uh, where, where you want it. Uh, once I get warp stabilizers on the dolly shots that, that, that look like they need them, then that portion of prepping my project is gone, is done. 
All right, so those are some steps there on, on prepping your project. We did some effect work just doing some stabilization and some reframing, and we added black videos, and we did a fade in at the beginning. So the, the, I'm going to cut this module off. In the next episode, I'm going to show you guys we're going to get into titling and credits.